Hey neighbors, hey friends, just like Sisyphus rolling that boulder up that hill. We're back for another day of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Happy Fat Tuesday, the 25th day of February 2020. I am Dan Koontz. Good stuff for you today. Another beautiful day weather-wise in North Central Washington. Looking forward to that. In fact, the whole week looks fantabulous. And even the weekend, even though things are going to, temperatures are going to go down a little bit, we'll see a few more clouds. i got no complaints as we bid February adieu. Welcome March on uh, Sunday. My guests in the back half of the hour <clears throat> are continuing series of interviews with our friends at the Pibus Public Market. This was a bonus one for you. Not only did I sit down with Leslie Freitag, the Executive Director of the Pibus Public Market, to talk about the events coming up next month in March. Uh, on Saturday, March 7th, is a big event. Nick's Bricks is coming once again to the Pibus Public Market. And not only did, not only did I sit down with Leslie, uh, we also had a chance to sit down and talk with uh, Nick Vitulli's parents, uh, Jane and Kevin Vitulli, visited us. Uh, Nick's Bricks is, well, Nick Vitulli. Uh, the late son of Jane and Kevin. It's a fascinating conversation. You don't want to miss that in the back half of the hour. Got some good news for you fans of Cashmere High School basketball. Both the girls and the boys will be televising their games this weekend. More on that when we get to sports, plus everything else you're used to. We got an opinion from Ivan McNaughty. We got today in history. We got some celebrity birthdays. We have an obscure holiday for you as well, and a whole bunch of news. A couple of minutes after the hour, mostly clear skies, 28 degrees. Let's do it. Let's take you around the valley. With our Valley View cameras, we always begin with our tour, and we always begin with the cross cam. As you can see, clouds are uh, kind of high clouds, and that's what we're going to be dealing with, high clouds, filtered sunshine for most of the day today. Not going to be as warm as it was yesterday. We got all the way to 49 on Monday, and the reason we got to 49 is that the overnight low was 32, and so uh, we climbed that ladder a little bit quicker. Now, Right now, it's 28 degrees, so it's going to take us a little while longer to get up to those 40s, so it's just going to be a couple of degrees cooler for the Wenatchee Valley today. Sunrise came up at 6.49. The sun will go down at 5.39. And if my math is correct, that means we got 10 hours and 50 minutes of daylight. Come on, spring. We need you. <clears throat> my golf game really needs you. Golf courses are just not at the bit getting ready to open up. Camera number two. Where are we off to, Megan? Oh, beautiful view. Um, gee, I see a... I see a grain tower. I see the sun. I don't know. Are we looking at Waterville? What are we looking at, Megan? We're looking at uh, Rude Canyon. Okay. Thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. Sun's just getting going up there, up in the uh, Waterville Plateau area. Good morning to our friends at Rude Canyon. I know a few people who live up there. None of them are rude. They're very pleasant indeed. It takes a certain kind of person to uh, live in that particular area. I mean, you're making like a cake and you go, oh, we're out of butter. Well, it's a seven-mile drive to get, you know, a stick of butter. So you have to <laughs> you have to uh, adopt a certain lifestyle if you live in that rural kind of area. Camera number three. <clears throat> oh, hello, Cashmere. Speaking of the aforementioned Cashmere, good to see you. Mount Stewart way off in the background. Mount Cashmere plainly in view. It's our good friends at Cashmere getting going. A lot of people, of course, live in the Cashmere area, but they work in the Wenatchee Valley proper. Wasn't always that way, but that's the way it is now. Cashmere is pretty much a bedroom community at Wenatchee, if you think about it. Good morning to our friends at Cashmere. The Wenatchee River, full of water at the last I checked, flowing nicely indeed. Camera number four, Megan says, let's go visit our friends up at Coles Corner as the sun starts to peek up there. The only reason I could pick that up, <clears throat> and again, with all the lights and the monitor in our studio, sometimes it's hard for me to see what we're looking at. It's much easier for you folks at home. To see what we're looking at but I always know the Coles Corner camera because you can see where they cut down all the trees for the power lines that run to the western side of the state so good morning to our friends up in the Greater Lake Wenatchee area Coles Corner Winton all that good stuff I haven't been to downtown Winton in a long time I'll have to put that on my list of things to do all right there we go it's four and a half minutes after the hour let's let you know what's going on this week weather wise again from the National Weather Service Weather for the rest of the week, <clears throat> again, dry, light winds, going to be very mild on Thursday and Friday. What do you see are high temperatures by the end of the week? And just a few passing high clouds, a mixture of clouds and sun. Uh, so there's a big ridge over the region that's going to be hanging around. Uh, just a couple of passing clouds filtering the sun at times, and that's it. Uh, we're looking at temperatures well above normal, especially on Friday. And then there's going to be a small frontal system on Saturday. Going to push the temperatures down a little bit. Going to get a little bit of rain, maybe some snow in the upper elevations. I think we're going to be mighty fine indeed as far as precipitation. Just a little chance of that. 
over the weekend. So that's a preview of what we got. Let's get a little bit more in detail from Patriot Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. They give your home a hug. National Weather Service says here's what we're looking at. Sunshine today. And again, just a little bit cooler than yesterday. Monday was 49. We'll be about 44, 45 degrees because, again, it's cooler at right now. So it'll take us a little while to climb up. Uh, overnight low tonight with clear with a few couple of clouds, 32. Uh, mostly sunny Wednesday, 51. We're looking at mostly sunny Thursday, 52. 53 on Friday. Wow. I want to go out and play some golf. Again, looking at fairly sunny skies on Saturday and Sunday. However, even though it's going to be sad, uh, sunny on Saturday and, uh, and on Sunday, there's going to be just a slight chance of a little bit of light rain Saturday. Most of it in the morning. We'll have sunshine for most of the day today, but we could see just a weak disturbance bringing us a few clouds and a couple of light snowflakes in the upper elevations and a couple of stray raindrops down here. I wouldn't bet on it outside of that. Quite a bit of sunshine, especially Saturday afternoon. Sunday looks good. And then another system packing a little bit more of a punch will be paying us a visit come Monday. A friendly reminder, Sunday is the first day of March. No complaints there. We've had a beautiful stretch of weather really over the last 10 days to two weeks. I got no complaints about that. Seven minutes after the hour to take you up to the major mountain passes where things are pretty quiet. Uh, we'll start out with I-90, Snoqualmie Pass. Right now, traction tires, uh, well, nothing. No advisories, no restrictions. Roadway's bare and dry. you got some scattered clouds up above. You are, you're pretty much easy to good to go. Now, it's not snowing on Stevens. You're going to look at the Stevens Pass camera and you go, wow, what's going on there? Uh, that, that camera is a little bit <clears throat> uh, deceiving, I guess is the best way to put it. Yeah, there's traction tires advised. You've got compact summit ice on the roadway. Most of Stevens Pass is just fine. It's just up at the summit where you're dealing with some snow. And it is not snowing, and they're not expecting any snow today. So if you're going to plan on taking Stevens Pass, give it a couple hours, let the plows get the job done, and you'll be fine. It's totally not that bad, but they still have a traction tire advisory on Stevens, which is great because yesterday at this time, Stevens was closed. And blew it Pass. You're fine. No problems at all. No advisories, no restrictions. The roadway is bare and wet. You'll find some patches of frost and ice in places, and that's about it. They're expecting maybe a half an inch of snow in the Cascades today. That's about it. Maybe an inch tonight, and then no snow at all until Saturday. So the pass is going to be dry for most of the part today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's not until Saturday when the next significant snow event uh, is going to be coming into the Cascades. Traction tires, again, advised on Stevens. No advisories, no restrictions on I-90 or on Blewett Pass. It's eight minutes after the hour. We are going to take a break and come back with your Tuesday morning news. There's quite a bit to get to as well. So grab your cup of coffee and your piece of toast and come back and join me in one minute. And I'll fill your head full of the information you need to start your day. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley live this morning from Studio 3 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Live Channel. My name is Lacey Haggerty and I'm a nurse midwife with Columbia Valley Community Health. I love all aspects of my job because it is a profession that's very committed to empowering women to make decisions in their health care that feel best for them. It's incredibly valuable to me as a midwife that I get to take care of women throughout their whole lifespan. I hope to see you at a future visit because I know you'll love having midwifery care. Uh, my name is Brian Thorpe. Uh, I own Global Car Care in Wenatchee and have been here for about 25 years. Brian started Global Car Care as Brian's automotive alternative on Arondo Street. Some customers were following Brian since uh, Brian's automotive time. You know, we're just grateful to be part of this community. This is where I grew up. We want to do our part to be a valuable part of this community. We want to thank you for trusting our business for 25 years. Few high clouds, 28 degrees in downtown Wenatchee. We'll top off in the mid 40s today with quite a bit of sunshine. We'll be in the lower 50s uh, for our afternoon highs by the time we get to the back half of the week. Beautiful late winter, early spring kind of weather. Here's what's making headlines on this Tuesday. A man wanted for second degree attempted murder led Okanagan Sheriff's deputies on a wild car and foot chase. This happened in Oroville on Saturday afternoon. He was eventually arrested. The sheriff's office says 29-year-old Sean Dahlquist struck 22-year-old Bradley Keener. He struck him with a propane tank and he cut his face with a knife at a residence on Juniper Road. Dahlquist reportedly had gone to the home after being called by Keener's girlfriend who said she and Keener 
were having a disagreement. Well, after the altercation, Keener fled to a residence on Balms Road, and that's where someone at that house called 911. That started a search for Dahlquist, who was spotted driving on North Main Street in Oroville. A chase through the town ensued, speeds up to 70 miles an hour, before Dahlquist jumped out of the moving vehicle on South Main Street. A deputy gave chase on foot, caught, caught Dahlquist after the suspect tripped while trying to enter an apartment. Keener, meanwhile, treated for his injuries at North Valley Hospital in Tenasket. Well, the father of Wenatchee Valley toddler who died from abuse says he's going to file a wrongful death lawsuit in this case. Two-year-old Rustin Atkerson died at Seattle Children's Hospital back in 2017, two months after a severe brain injury. His mother, Elaine Hurd, pled guilty to felony mistreatment of a child last year, but denied causing Rustin's injury. The boy's father, Ian Atkerson, started proceedings last month in Chelan County Court to be appointed personal representative of the child's estate. Well, it's official. Mission Ridge Ski and Board Resort moving ahead with plans to develop a ski village around their, its down, downhill slopes. Chelan County says it has received Mission Ridge's application to build 621 condominium units, 275 single-family homes, and 110,000 square feet of commercial space, all of it phased in over the next couple of decades. The application starts a 30-day public comment period, which residents can review the plans and make their thoughts known to the Chelan County Community Development Office. You can view the plans on Chelan County's website. The comment period, by the way, ends at 5 p.m. on March 30th. Well, the 2020 race for the State House of Representatives could be a hot one here for the 12th District. Dr. Ann Diamond, the Medhow Valley physician who lost to Representative Keith Gaynor in 2018, plans a campaign launch February 29th, this Saturday at the Wenatchee Public Library. Diamond says she'll be campaigning for the seat Gaynor now holds. Diamond last ran as an independent candidate. Gaynor, of course, is a longtime Republican. Well, a Bridgeport area road that remains closed until further notice due to extremely unstable slope conditions. Dezellum Hill Road, it was built in the 1880s along a steep hillside in the Bridgeport area. It serves about a dozen homes. Now, Douglas County Commissioners say maintaining the unpaved road as a secondary access for those residents has been a long time struggle. Commissioners also say a portion of Dezellum Road has completely collapsed, leaving a huge chasm that slices the road in half. The roadbed is, uh, I would best characterize it by saying it's probably slumped a good uh, six to eight feet below the, uh, the other areas. And so it is certainly not passable by car. Uh, and we continue to try to make it passable by way of walking so that folks can park a car on either side and be able to uh, get to and from uh, Bridgeport that way. Um, it is certainly of concern. We are looking at uh, continuing to explore long-term solutions uh, for the road itself. Um, it's certainly an issue uh, that uh, as is concerned for us, particularly the safety of the individuals up there. And we're definitely uh, sensitive to the fact that this is, um, and for a lot of those folks, represents a a huge uh, shift in the way that they get to and from work and other services in that area. Douglas County spent over $300,000 last year in a failed effort to stabilize that slope. They say Denzelum Hill Road may ultimately have to be closed permanently. And finally, on this Tuesday morning, outdoor enthusiasts from all over North Central Washington attended last weekend's Wenatchee Valley Sportsman Show at the Town Toyota Center as they took in the various booths on hunting and fishing and outdoor gear and outdoor organizations. A change was happening behind the scenes. Our very own sports director, Eric Granstrom, filed this report. Merle Schuler, owner of the Sportsman Shows here in Wenatchee as well as Yakima and Tri-Cities, is selling to local media consultant, Amy Gustin. I contacted Amy about the possibility of taking over the, uh, the Wenatchee show because she lives here. And uh, unbeknownst to me, she was actually interested in all three. I have one in the Tri-Cities in January. The week before Wenatchee is Yakima, and then there's the Wenatchee show. And so she said, well, what about the other two shows? And I go, well, I hadn't even really thought about it. <laughs> but uh, the more my wife and I talked about it, uh, we got grandbabies now that we like to go see and maybe travel a little bit. 
It's uh, fa fairly labor intensive, as Amy will know, uh, for three to four months out of the year. The rest of the time is is not easy, but it's it's easier than around the show time, and you get you can get quite busy. Gustin runs the ADG Media Group and has extensive background with trade and event shows and working with the media. Well, I've been doing shows in the Wenatchee Valley for my clients, and when I was in radio back in the day with you, uh, we used to do the KPQ show. Uh, then I moved on to the Home Builders Association, and I've been helping them with their show. Um, I've worked on Ale Fest. I've worked on Oktoberfest for years. Um, so it's a natural fit for my business um, to take on these shows. My husband and I love um, to fish around here. I raised around here. My dad hunted and fished and taught me everything. So, And I want to keep these going. I want to grow them. I want the next generation um, to see what there is to offer in this valley. Gustin says the reason she took on all three shows rather than just Wenatchee was quite simple. I didn't want to split them up. I think that they're such a good product what Bev and Merle put together all these years ago and um, I want to carry it on for them. I want to take it to the next level and um, show everybody throughout all of North Central Washington that this industry is alive and well. Gustin has spent this year traveling around to the shows and taking copious notes. She and her husband John will start running things next year, but won't make any big changes right away. I've heard lots of great ideas, and I love ideas because with that, something will always come. Um, but I'm probably going to do something out on Facebook, maybe do some sort of survey for attendees and volunteers um, with some, you know, basic questions to get those ideas rolling. Um, there'll be lots to come. Absolutely. But next year, I want to get through the shows. I want to, you know, grow attendance um, and I want to do some cross promotion with the vendors. So that'll probably be the first thing for the first year. And then I'll start changing things. She's got energy <laughs> and it takes energy to do these shows. Uh, and if she's got it, she'll do just fine. At the Wadanchi Valley Sportsman Show, I'm Eric Grandstrom for the NCW Life Channel. Nice catch. Always good to see Merle and Amy. Best of luck to my good friend, Amy, taking over the Sportsman Show. It's good for her. 18 minutes after the hour, the news team will be back at it again, gathering news, disseminating news, and putting together a newscast that you can check out at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. And with a preview, here's Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, it looked like March will come in like a lamb. I'll have your complete North Central Washington weather forecast, and Eric Granstrom will be in with a look at sports. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Don't forget, get a hold of us. Uh, news tips. You just want to say hi. You want to drop us a line. This is your station as much as it is ours. Look at the bottom of the screen. That's all the different ways you can get a hold of us. Email us, go to our website, go to our Facebook page, pick up the phone and give us a call. Grab a bullhorn, stand on your roof and say, hey guys, how are you? I wouldn't do that. The authorities will probably show up, but we'd love to hear from you, our viewers. All right, going to take a break. When we come back, sports, the obscure holiday. we got today in history, some celebrity birthdays to get along to you. Mike Magnotti has an opinion you might be paying attention to. And then it's our visit with our friends at the Pibus Public Market. Not only did we talk about... Uh, the upcoming events uh, with Leslie Freitag coming up for the month of March, but also Nick's Bricks. It's a great conversation. Don't miss it. Don't go anywhere. Sports is one minute away. Watch Mike up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. What is it to be a volunteer firefighter? Is it the gear, the training, the vehicles you learn to drive, the honor of protecting your community? Time, energy, sweat, sometimes blood and even tears. Every call may not be a victory. Sometimes you'll walk away wondering if you helped at all. But sometimes you will be a hero. You want to help others. You need a solid career. You can have both with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, stop by our campus at 595 Grant Road across from Safeway or visit chartercollege.edu.
Back at it on this Fat Tuesday, 20 minutes after the hour. Let's talk sports. We will be there. Our cameras will be there courtside. This Saturday, we'll be broadcasting the regional basketball games for Cashmere High School. We'll be at Wenatchee High School. Now, we've worked out the details with the WIAA and the NFHS Network to bring you live coverage of the Cashmere Boys in Kingsway Christian, that game at 4 o'clock at Wenatchee High School. That'll be followed by the Cashmere Girls and the Nusak Valley game. We were not going to bore you with the details. Essentially, uh, the NFHS Network has exclusive rights to postseason events for the WIAA. So as a result, we've negotiated a deal. We'll do the broadcast. We'll provide the NFHS with our feed. That'll be available on a subscription basis through their website. Our broadcast will only be broadcast on TV. So you can watch it on local tele channel 12, charter channel 19, or over the air, of course. In turn, we'll be taking a feed from the NFHS Network next week to broadcast games of the state tournament from the Sun Dome in Yakima. So it's kind of a win-win for everything. Uh, the Big Nine is out with their postseason all-conference teams, the league's co-players of the year in boys basketball. Garrett Long of Bonacci and Logan Kinlock of West Valley. Congratulations to those two. Eastmont's Isaac Wellborn and Moses Lake's Kyle Karstetter, first team selections. Eastmont's Trey Haberlock, second team selection. Wenatchee's Chase Lloydhammer and Oscar Calvillo of Eastmont, chosen to the Big Nine's all-defensive team. As far as the ladies are concerned, Madison Clark is the Big Nine Girls Player of the Year from Moses Lake. Her teammates Anna Olson and Camille Carpenter, second team selections, along with Eastmont's Jaden Brown, Wenatchee's Emily Redmond, Carpenter and Olson, also on the all-Big Nine defensive team. A young figure skater from Wenatchee making a splash in the big stage. That's Liam Kapakis. He's a 10th grader, and he recently captured the bronze medal at the 2020 U.S. Figure Skating Junior Men's Championships in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's been a busy year for Liam. He, completed, he competed in the 2020 Youth Olympic Games in Lausanne, Switzerland. has been invited to attend the U.S. Figure Skating Junior World Camp because of his rigorous schedule and practicing and competition. Kapikas attends school through Washington Connections Academy. It's a tuition-free online public school that serves students in grades K through 12. Liam grew up as a member of the Wenatchee Figure Skating Club. Let's talk baseball. The Mariners played their third game, the Cactus League, under the brilliant sunshine in Pieria, Arizona yesterday, taking on the Cubs. Although they lost, it was a pretty good day for Tim Lopes. What a day for Tim. Tim has a single, a double, two for two, and a run batted in. The pitch on the way. Swing and a drive deep into left field. Burn going back, and this one is going to be off the base of the wall on a hop. Scoring is wisdom right behind him. Liberato, the throw to the plate. He slides, and he scores. The relay a little bit late. It gets away from the catcher, Higgins. Tim Lopes, what an afternoon. A double and two runs batted in. And it's now the Cubs 13. And the Mariners, seven. Two batters later, Dylan Moore. He had a nice little home run, his first home run of spring training. The start soon as the previous play is over. Here's the pitch. Swung on, well hit ball, deep to left field. Going and going and goodbye baseball. A rocket off the bat of Dylan Moore. Over the bullpen, underneath and into the tenant area. What a shot by Moore. A two-run home run. And it's now the Cubs 13 and the Mariners 9. Dylan's first home run of the spring is a tee shot, a two-run home run. Austin Nola, he went two for two with the plate and a run and an RBI. The final, by the way, 16 to 12. They lost to Chicago with spring training. That's the kind of scores you're going to get. The Ames travel to Phoenix today for a game against the Milwaukee Brewers at noon. Finally, here's a look at what's coming up for our broadcast schedule this week, sports-wise. On the NCW Live channel, it begins tonight. we got a wrestling match from back in January between Eastmont and Ike. Eric had the call. We'll have that for you at 7 o'clock tonight. Hockey night Thursday, a game from a couple of weekends ago between the Wild and Chilliwack from the Town Trader Center. Our checker with your play-by-play. -play. We'll have that Thursday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to re-air the Wenatchee and Moses Lake boys basketball playoff game Friday at 7. And then on Saturday, as I mentioned before, live coverage of the 1A Regional from Wenatchee High School beginning with the Cashmere Boys and Kingsway Christian at 4, Grant Olson with the play-by-play -play there, and then at 6 o'clock, Cashmere Girls in New Sack Valley, Eric Granstrom on the call right here on your home for local sports. That's us, the NCW Life Channel, 30 days until opening day of the baseball season. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Fat Tuesday, which is one of the obscure holidays I had a chance to choose from, but it's Fat Tuesday. I think everybody knows what that is the day before Ash Wednesday. It's also Spay Day USA. Not going to do that one. 
Uh, it's National Chocolate Covered Nut Day. Not going to do that one. Nope, because I'm a fan of clam chowder. And today is National Clam Chowder Day. I actually celebrated early. I uh, was ready for dinner last night, and I went to EZ's Burger Deluxe on North Wenatchee Avenue. We had a big bowl of their clam chowder. Uh, everybody's heard of clam chowder. I know a few people who actually don't even like clam chowder. I don't know what's wrong with them. There's all kinds of different clam chowders. I'm a traditionalist. Not a big fan of the Manhattan clam chowder or the Rhode Island clam chowder. Uh, clam chowder dates all the way back to 1795. It was basically a water-based fish soup. And they would put onions, potatoes, and carrots in it to thicken it up. But it was still kind of thin. It wasn't until they started adding dairy products, milk, to thicken it up. Uh, it became very popular among sailors uh, in the 19, early part of the 19th century because they got sick and tired of eating fish all the time on the boat. But wait a minute. If we do this to the clams, it kind of makes things a little different. Um, I love clam chowder. It's a staple in a lot of restaurants. Uh, it's also much more accessible. Nothing like fresh clam chowder. Nothing against Progresso. Nothing against Campbell's. But... Yeah, the real deal is the real deal, and you got to have it in a bowl, too. Oh, that looks good, a bread bowl. Yeah, I, I had a nice bowl of clam chowder last night, a little pepper on top. It's good. Happy National Clam Chowder Day. You notice most of the obscure holidays are food-related? Go figure. Uh, today in history, a couple of big-time companies got founded on this date. One of them, the Colt Revolver Company. Uh, it was on February 25th, 1836, 184 years ago, that Samuel Colt, received grant was granted a patent for his Colt revolver. Now he didn't invent the revolver, but his design resulted in the first successful revolvers. And of course, revolvers changed uh, the way we fired guns. Before that, it was simply a single shot pistol. The Colt revolver, which was patented on this date in 1836, changed all that for good or ill, whatever your opinion maybe on that and by uh, by 100 years later Colt the Colt revolver company and the Colt company had about 80 percent of the market share for all firearms in the United States and it all started 184 years ago today this company was so big at one time Wall Street simply called it the corporation I'm talking about US Steel JP Morgan incorporated the United States Steel on this date in 1901 119 years ago Today, at one time, it was the largest steel producer in the world. It was the largest corporation in the world. Its original capitalization was $1.4 billion. Now, in 1901, that was a lot of money. It was the very first billion-dollar corporation. U.S. Steel eventually started to fall on hard times. It was taken off uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Averages in the 1990s, and then basically was taken off the Standards & Poor's 500 a couple of years later. It's still around, but not nearly the behemoth it used to be. United States Steel, founded on this date 119 years ago. And this is the 56th anniversary, one of the biggest upsets in sports history at Miami Beach, Florida, February 24th, 1964. Muhammad Ali, at the time known as Cassius Clay, a 7-1 to one underdog, defeated Sonny Liston, a technical knockout in the seventh round, and Muhammad Ali became the world champion heavyweight boxer on this date 56 years ago today, and the legend began. And finally, birthdays. He was the voice of Mr. Magoo. He was James Dean's father in the classic film Rebel Without a Cause, but he'll probably always be best known as Thurston Howell III. On Gilligan's Island, Jim Backus was born this date in 1913, passed away at the age of 89, uh, passed away at the age of 76 in 1989. Everybody on the cast of Gilligan's Island loved him, and on a lot of his lines, if you go back and watch Gilligan's Island rerun or two, Jim Backus uh, did his very best to get his various castmates to crack up on camera. He ad-libbed a lot of his lines. He was a very funny guy. Jim Backus, born in the state in 1913. George Harrison, born in the state in 1943. We lost George to cancer in 2001 at the age of 58. The youngest member of the Beatles is good friend Paul McCartney. Uh, Paul went to his friend John Lennon. They were already together as the quarrymen, John and Paul were, and he said, "My, uh, I got a buddy named George. He's in a grade below me. He's a really good guitarist. Can he join the band? And John said, no, he's just a kid. He's just a kid. But George kept tailing, kept hanging around the quarrymen. But the thing that really made George uh, into the band is that George's mother would allow the Beatles to rehearse at their house. And hey, when you're a rock and roll band and you rehearse, you have a tendency to be noisy. But George's mother would tolerate their noisy rehearsals. And because of that, John said, okay, George, you can join the band. He's probably glad he did. George Harrison, born in the state of 1943. Happy birthday to Rashida Jones, 
44 years old today, the daughter of Quincy Jones and the late Peggy Lipton, who passed away last year, Parks and Rec, The Office, Boston Public, and she was in the movie The Muppets a couple of years ago. Rashida Jones is 44 years old today. Bottom of the hour, it's kind of funny, today is Fat Tuesday, tomorrow is Ash Wednesday, and Mike McNaughty has an opinion about the Catholic Church coming up. And then my conversation with Leslie Freitag and the Fatulis, uh, Jane and Kevin Fatuli, talking about Nick's Bricks coming up on Saturday, the 7th of March at the Pivus Pub Market, all coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley live this morning from Studio 4 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life Channel. The two hottest pickups in America are at Town Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. First, the Ram 1500 with back-to-back -back Truck of the Year awards from Motor Trend, and now the Car and Driver 10 Best List for 2020. They call it a luxury sedan with pickup capabilities. Ram is on a roll now with third-generation eco-diesel power. Next up, the Jeep Gladiator, also a 2020 10 Best model based on the new award-winning Jeep Wrangler. It has options and capabilities that no other truck can offer. Two more reasons when it comes to buying a truck, there's no reason to leave town. Badger Mountain Brewing is proud to announce the grand opening of our new kitchen. Come try out our new menu featuring fabulous steaks, prime rib, gourmet burgers, and seafood grilled up by experienced meat master, Chef Galen Goodman. To complement your mouth-watering meal, Badger Mountain Brewing features 14 in-house crafted beers, an alcohol-free root beer infused with 11 different herbs and spices, three different ciders, and a great wine selection. Don't miss out on the best meats and the best brews down at Badger Mountain Brewing, located at 1 Arondo Avenue across the tracks from the Pibus Market. Doghouse Motorsports just won Best Motorsports Store for the sixth year in a row. Is it the great facility? Is it the fantastic products? Or is it? I'm Bobby. And I'm Tabor. I'm Mike. And I'm Glenn. Hi, I'm Todd. I'm Jeff. And this is the Doghouse Service Team. Hi, I'm Dee. And I'm Dwayne. And I'm Kathy. Come on in and experience the Doghouse. Are you in the Doghouse? Let Fitterer's Furniture help you turn your dreams into reality with their exciting selection of quality furnishing and accessories. Whatever style you are looking for, you will find beautifully crafted furniture of exceptional value and the unmatched Fitterer's customer service to make this shopping experience one you will keep coming back to. Make a point of visiting Fitterer's Furniture in downtown Ellensburg. Quality selection and service since 1896. With TV advertising, what we want to do is more deeply connect with the community. People spot me in different parts around North Central, you know, Costco and Wenatchee, say, hey, you're the pizza guy. And so they wouldn't know that if it weren't for the, for the TV commercials we've done. We've been here so long that people already know who we are and what we do, but to have that image flash on their television screen as opposed to just hearing in the radio or seeing in the newspaper, I just love the fact that we can actually put our finger on when a customer comes in and says, I saw your ad. It's becoming increasingly difficult in this digital age to know where are your customers listening or watching, because I watch all the different channels that they watch too, like Cooking Channel, History Channel, and so it was wonderful to be able to be on there. I would say that uh, if you wanna do business in Wenatchee, then you should connect with the people of Wenatchee, and there's no better way to do that than with NCW Life. Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, a good pal of mine who was raised in the Catholic Church recently said that he feels that the Roman Catholic Church is little better than a criminal organization which due to past abuses and specifically due to the way sexually abusive priests have been protected and their crimes covered up, that organization should be disbanded and eliminated. Well, I, I see his point and appreciate that he does speak as a member of that particular club so to speak. There are many people for whom the Catholic Church is still their earthly means of connecting with God. And every church, big or small, has its problems. Now, of course they do. We humans run them. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Dr. Wayne Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic and Rehab Clinic is on North Mission Street. If you've been injured on the job, in an automobile accident, or a sports injury, call today and try his wraparound services. Call 888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888-888
884-HELP. That's 884-4357. Call Dr. Latimer's Integrative Chiropractic and Rehab Clinic today. Hi, I'm Lisa Bradshaw, host of Life with Lisa Bradshaw. I just want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in and watching the show. I leave on the next Don't Wait Project Tour in March. And in the meantime, we have plenty of local interviews for your viewing pleasure. Thanks again for watching Life with Lisa Bradshaw. It's not about my life, it's about yours. For more information about Showtimes or about the show, visit ncwlife.com. Welcome back to Wake Up in Angie Valley. Once a month, we come here to the second floor of the loft of South here at Pibus Public Market, where communities meet, and we catch up with our friend Leslie Freitag, the executive director of the Pibus Market, about all cool things Pibus happening for the month of March. We, it's going to be an incredible month for you guys, an incredibly busy month for you guys. A very busy month. It's one of our busiest months of the year. But first things first, you, you, got, you got a new tenant coming in. We do. Sadly, full bloom plants uh, at Flowers and Plants left us at the end of last month. They basically ran out of room. Wasn't they that about it? They basically outgrew yeah. the space. It's only 600 square feet, and they really do most of their business is in weddings, and they needed a larger footprint. So, but we are delighted to announce that McGregor Farms is coming, and McGregor Farms is a honey and bees. They are beekeepers, and so we have a wonderful shop going in with honey and mead. Ooh! Does anyone know what mead is? I haven't got a clue. Well, so it was the very first alcoholic beverage ever invented by man. You Some, think I would know that? You would think. <laughs> it, it, it beats beer. <laughs> <laughs> wow! And they have a, one of their sons is a beer a mead maker okay. and so it's going to become a tasting room we're really excited oh, wow. about it so you'll be able to experience and learn about mead as well as taste all of their wonderful varieties of honey honey related products so it'll be a happening spot down there when you get a vacancy which is extremely rare here at the pibus how does that process work when 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 you solicit for somebody to take over a space that's going to be vacated walk yes. me through that so yes well first thing we do is send out a press release and announce that somebody is leaving and and why and then we say that we are accepting applications for a new, a new tenant. And we, the board here has a tenant committee. We meet with everyone. We ask for, to review their business plan, get to know them. And it's a very, um, you know, we really spend a lot of time looking at, will that be a business bringing something creative and new to uh, our region? So yes, and, and so we only want independents and locals. Right. Yes. It sounds like a perfect fit. It is. Yeah. We are delighted. And actually, McGregor Farms has been with the Wenatchee Valley Farmers Market for the last four or five years okay so they're known here in the community and we're delighted to bring them into a permanent home but I think it, it says a lot about the the strength and the resiliency of the Pibus public market almost every one of the anchor tenants have been here since day one since day one yeah yes. they're, they're not going yeah, anywhere they're not going anywhere we love them all uh, they are who help create what Pibus has become today is this wonderful place to come. One of the things that surprised me uh, from the last time we filmed here is how busy the indoor playground is at the, at the local Televent Center. That, yes. That's a great thing. It is a great thing. Parks and Recs comes yeah. down uh, every between November and the end of March every year. Um, and it's a wonderful program. It's a great place for families to bring their little ones. It's Monday through Thursday, 9 to 12. A dollar for a Wenatchee resident, a dollar fifty for everyone else, and it's it's great. And the people who actually work from Parks and Rec, who are who are keeping care of the kids and making sure everything stays in the up and up, they they love their job. You can tell. Oh yes, they, yes, they're I mean, it's it. fun. Yes, yeah, they're really I digging say, it. It's the happiest place. Yeah, there you go. That's Disney. Copyright yeah, Disney. Copyright, yes. I don't want to get in trouble there. <laughs> no, no. What else is uh, happening uh, event-wise in event March? Coming, uh, some great events coming up. We begin March 7th with Nix Bricks coming to an, uh, coming to Pibus, and uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Uh, we're excited. We're going to really do something fun for St. Patrick's Day. Ah, Tura Lula Lula. Yes, and Wenatchee's shortest parade, St. Patrick's Day parade mm -hmm. of the world. Uh, we'll end their parade. They do their one block, and then they'll be coming down here for their award ceremony. We'll have music. We'll have fun things going on at the restaurants and Irish dancers and free mm. gifts, surprises Ooh. for anyone wearing green. Okay. So that'll be really fun on St. Patrick's Day. Um, and then on 
Saturday the 21st, we will be having our nonprofit day, which is really a, a wonderful thing. We coordinate that with the Community Foundation, and it's an opportunity for all the nonprofits in the region to have a table and a space to talk about what their missions are and make new friends. And get volunteers, and, and it works every new, time, too. It works every time, and yeah. it's something, we get calls all year long about when is it, both for the nonprofits who want to be sure they get a table, and also for, you know, re local residents here. Where can I go to volunteer? So it's a great fit. How is the winter going so far at Pybus? Besides we had a very mild winter. We had yeah. a significant snow plan this year that we didn't really have to implement, oh, okay. so that was good. Saved us <laughs> a few pennies, which is always good. Yeah, no, it's been a great. And the new entryway uh, closest to Orondo is just, it's oh, so plaza. much better than it used to be, the oh, plaza. Yeah. Yes, it is. And we are busy planning. We have lots of exciting events that we're working on from the summer going through the fall season. So lots of new things. Well, from out. an infrastructure standpoint, the two things that people noticed was the entryway was kind of, and now yes. you have the plaza yes. and and the old room which is now the local Televent center is a fantabulous meeting space it so is. those two big headaches have been taken care of yes. in the world of the infrastructure of pibus anything down the hopper you want to talk about uh one of the things that's on our radar very much on our radar screen is the west parking lot um it's concrete it's full of pock marks it's, it's the original concrete it's the I mean, original it's, yeah. concrete and we um our building committee is currently actually doing some studies and we're trying to figure out what the options might be and hopefully we'll be able to do something next year it's in our capital plan for 2021 and of course the uh, parking lot is always full too which it's is always, always good. full yeah. yes and you know and especially we you know we go down to the south and we're on the dirt and hopefully someday that's also another opportunity but we're waiting for the uh south of pibus development to get finalized to see how that's going to all shake out too. I would be remiss uh, since we're here visiting uh, to talk about, as we all know by now, when Ashley Valley Brewing is pulling out. Yes, they are. Where where are we in that pro? I know you probably there's some things you can't <laughs> tell me, but I at least have to ask because I'm well, here. Yes, yes. Um, again, our tenant committee has we've visited with lots of people. There have been it was extraordinary interest in the space, um, and I think we're getting really close to be able to announce something within the next few weeks. Okay, I am assuming because of the infrastructure it's going to be food related because it has a commercial kitchen and all that stuff. That's just an assumption, but is it? Uh, well, we'll have <laughs> to wait. Stay tuned. Leslie's being coy. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you go to the Pibus website, the calendar is super easy to use. You click on it, you get all the information. That's how I read up about Nick's Bricks, which is what we're going to be talking about here in a couple of minutes. Anything else on your mind, Leslie, while I have you here? No, I, the only thing I would like to play a little commercial, we're always recruiting for ambassadors, so volunteers that man our info booth, and they're our first face to all of the guests that come to visit us. So if anyone is interested, just email volunteer at pibusmarket.org and we'd love to meet you and get you involved with our ambassadors. I talked to your head ambassador person uh, last month. She's really good. She is. She She's is. really good. Yes, yeah. Ann Appleby does a great yeah, job She for does us. a great, and her husband too, we need yes, to mention Pat, that as well. Yes, yes. So even though Pat didn't do TV. Uh, Leslie, it's great to see you. We're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna talk about Nick's Bricks. We're yes. gonna talk to Nick's parents. Uh, about the inspiration of Nick's Bricks, which is actually the really big event that's going to be happening here on March 7th. 7th, 7th March I got that 7th. right. Yeah. Yes, starting at 9 a.m. Yep. And that'll be the topic of conversation when we come back. We are broadcasting Wake Up Anche Valley here from uh, south on top of Pibus on Wake Up Anche Valley. We'll be right back. This is Caitlin Hedersheet, the producer of the NCW Life magazine. Each week, I'm bringing you a look behind the scenes of the faces, places, and events that make North Central Washington the place we call home. Tune in every weekday for an in-depth look at a new topic each week. From local artists in their studios to businesses breaking barriers that might surprise you and everything in between. Join me on the NCW Life magazine right here on the NCW Life channel. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. 
Join us for Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. This former police sergeant is plugged into not only the world of the streets, he's an actor and connoisseur of the arts. So join Mike and his guests for, well, Street Talk and Other Stuff. Mondays at 10 a.m., Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Wednesdays at 5.30. It's Street Talk and Other Stuff with Mike Magnotti on the NCW Life Channel. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating has been serving North Central Washington for 34 years. Arctic provides the finest heating and cooling air quality products for residential and commercial customers along with prompt and professional customer service. Arctic also offers specialty services like custom sheet metal fabrication of ductwork, coil cleaning, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Arctic is available for emergency calls 24-7. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Coons. We are continuing our March profile of events going on at the Pibus Public Market. Introduce yourselves to our television family, please. Yes, my name is Kevin Vitulli. And I'm Jane Vitulli. And Kevin and Jane were the parents of Nick, uh, which is what we're going to talk about. Nick's bricks. Um, you lost your son, tragically. Yes. Uh, in Africa. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you want to talk first a little bit about Nick before we dive into Nick's bricks? Sure, itself? sure. Either one of you, go right ahead. Yeah, well, uh, our son Nick, uh, he was 24 years old when we lost him, and uh, he was a real playful, playful kind of guy. He loved, uh, he loved Legos. So uh, we, uh, we were able to kind of parlay his love of Legos into this uh, event at the Pibus. What was the inspiration behind this event, Nick's Bricks, besides Nick himself as a human being and the fact that he was well-loved? Uh, well, he, he did love Legos. He loved them his whole life, actually. He started as a little boy, but he loved them even as an adult. And um, when we saw that the Pibus put on a, a, a Lego event, we saw that and we thought, wow, Nick would have loved that. And so. Uh, graciously, uh, the Pibus uh, asked if, if we wanted to be involved and have this named after Nick, which is just amazing uh, in itself. We're so thankful to the Pibus, but it's a really fun event for kids, and we're just really honored to be a part of it. Kevin, Kevin what exactly is the event for those people who have never, never seen this yeah, before? Yeah, the, the main thing is it's a make and take, meaning you could come and uh, Make, make your creations with Legos, uh, and then you take that home with you. It's, uh, it's all free, uh, so it's, that's pretty exciting. Usually people like things that are free. And, uh, but we have a, we've kind of created a little more of a, a festive and party atmosphere, I could say, around it. There's music, there's uh, Lego cookies, there's a toddler room for young kids that don't do Legos to come and play. And so we've really tried to create a, a real fun day for families. What is it about Legos? I mean, I love Legos, and I'm 55 years old. What is it about them that, that just... Well, Legos, that's what's really fun, is yeah. everybody likes Legos, girls, boys, adults, and it brings the community together. And um, that's, that's just really special, because you see families come in and all, you know, all different types of kids and families and grandmas come and they put their phones down and they play with Legos and they just have a fun day. There's displays there and um, construction hats that they wear and plaid shirts they wear in honor of Nick and it's just a really fun day for everybody. Is Nick metaphysically watching this you think uh, on yeah, Saturday? We, we I think, think so. Think so. Yeah. We, we hope, so. We hope yeah. so. I think he would have just absolutely we, loved this. We, yeah. we try to measure everything we do with this event uh, as what would Nick do so we, th we think he's watching over this. Yeah. What do you want people to take away from this if, when they come? They don't even have to play with Legos. What do you want what do you want people to take away from this event? Nick's Bricks. I'll let you go first. Right I think um, just just the need to come together as a community and take care of each other and um, have a good time. Uh, it's a time for families to really take time with their children. You know, we live busy lives, but if they can just come for a day and, and like I said, you don't see a lot of cell phones out. You just see a lot of families come together and have fun. And I just think that's so important. And that's what we really enjoyed about Nick is he enjoyed fun and family. That's, that's, that was what he was all about. So 
that's what I want as a takeaway. Kevin, same but question. Yeah, the, there, there is a little bit of a takeaway in the sense that uh, we've, we've known that Legos have a connection to STEM learning. Mm -hmm. And so if we're getting kids hooked on this STEM learning type of environment and Legos have, have done that. So, you know, I, I, that's not the motivation necessarily, but it's, it's, a, it's a secondary thing that we like to see. And so I think that's, uh, that's an important aspect of this. Who says education can't be fun? But the, right. the, word, the word I'm taking away from this is fun. Yeah. Yes. Come down here and have fun. Kids of that's all right. ages, right? That's yes. right. Whole nine yes. Yards. Yes. Do they just show up? What do, what do they need to know about March 7th for, for the people out there watching? What do they need to know? Yeah, so it's been very amazingly successful the last couple of years. So this year we do kind of have a new format. Uh, it is first come, first served, but uh, there is going to be four separate sessions of an hour each. And so people can come, they can get in line or register. We will give them a, a lanyard that kind of corresponds to their session that they're going to be in. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they can come back for that, or if they're in the first session, they would just kind of go right through. So we're trying to, thanks to Leslie, we're, we're organizing it a little bit more this year and trying to control the crowds yeah. that we've had you last had, year. You had five, 600 last year, didn't you, something like well, that? We, we had 850 kids. Wow. And so uh, yeah, multiply that by the families. And so it, it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty busy here yeah. at various times. So we're trying to control that a little bit more. Well, Leslie's, Leslie's an organizational whiz on yeah, that. She's, yeah, so. she's wonderful. I just can't say enough about the Pivus Market and mm -hmm. and their love for the community and the love that they've poured out to, to our family. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to just thank the Rutherford family. Uh, Karen and Peter have uh, donated, a lot of, <laughs> yep. donated a lot of time and Legos to mm -hmm. this event. I was going to so, ask you, where are the Legos coming from? Well, they, they have donated okay. much of the Legos, but we have a lot of sponsors for this event now that are also part of this. It's incredible how the community has so quickly come together and, and supported this event. We, and, we uh, have over 30 sponsors this year, <laughs> and they donate money, and mm -hmm. we're able to buy Legos. and. People worry about us running about running out of Legos. We're not going to run <laughs> out of Legos. Yeah. Yeah. There's about 800 pounds of Legos oh. coming down yeah, for this. That's yeah, a lot of that's a lot of Legos. <laughs> that's yeah, a lot of yeah. Legos. Yeah, almost half a ton of Legos. <laughs> we, we are excited this year though as well because we have uh, uh, Boone Langston, who's a contestant on Lego Masters coming and uh, he's going to be a part of uh, was Nick's that the super yeah. secret thing I've been hearing about uh, so now yeah, the cat's out of the bag uh, there I'm yes, sorry it is. no that's yes, fine it is. <laughs> that's yes, fine it we're, is, we're so. really excited and uh, you know if you're if you're watching that at all you'll see he's one of the better Lego masters on that show I think so uh, he's gonna come and talk and I think he's gonna bring some of his creations oh wow mm -hmm. that's oh, really wow. special so it, it starts at 9 o'clock yes 9 a.m. Uh, how much does it cost it's free. I love it. It's How free. Much, that's going to be the name of my book. How <laughs> much does it cost if it's free? I'm going to write free. a book called that. Yes. Um, but uh, even though it's first come, first serve, you want to avoid uh, just a big mob of people at 9 o'clock, too, right? So Right. You it, can come throughout the day. Throughout the day. Yeah. You're not going to you're, you're gonna, We're you're not gonna gonna get Lego out of thing. Legos. Right. Uh, right. right. Each so, yeah. session, will, you know, there's reserved cookies and hats and Legos for each session. Good. So nobody, if you go in a later session, there will be just as much as the first session. So. Good. Can we bring a camera down and take a look at it while we're down here? Absolutely. Oh, we yeah. would yeah. love absolutely. that. We yeah. would absolutely uh, More information on Nick, who, who uh, was a wonderful guy, only 24. It's, it's a tragedy in many respects, but his light burns on in this <laughs> event, and, uh, and I love that. Uh, go to the Pipus Puppet Market, and you'll see the icon there and click on it. You can read up uh, all about Nick's bricks and all that good stuff. And uh, have fun on Saturday the 7th. That's the, That's what we want you to do. Thank and you. thanks for joining us on Wake yeah. Up in Anchee Valley. Thank All you. Right. I appreciate Thank you. it. Yep. Thank you so much. We are uh, Wake Up in Anchee Valley here at the Pipus Public Market, as we do it once a month, uh, up above uh, up above south here on the second uh, floor. And uh, Wake Up in Anchee Valley continues right after this. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. 
Coming home should never be a chore. Let Merry Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Merry Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Merry Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. While it may be hard to resist those big brown eyes and pleading face, many people aren't aware that people food can be dangerous to pets. And it's not just because of the added weight gain. Some foods are downright dangerous, including chocolate. For a detailed list of dangerous foods, go online to pawsandclawsvh.com. If you suspect your pet has eaten something dangerous, please call Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff at 888-PAWS as your pet's health is important to us. There's no substitute for the power of cable TV advertising. With Solion Cable TV Advertising, you can reach your target audience right here in North Central Washington. We understand their viewing habits and can precisely target your customers on great cable networks like these. Call Solion Broadcasting today and let us show you how to put your business message right in front of thousands of prospects at a very affordable price. Solion Broadcasting, 509-888-2020. Somebody's moving the camera. <clears throat> They're not supposed to be doing this. We sent out a memo. When we're live on the air, you don't log on to the cross camera and start moving it around. I'll have to send out another nasty gram. How are you? Good Fat Tuesday to you. Uh, we got about uh, three minutes left in this program, so let's wrap up the program where we began with our weather forecast. First of all, a preview of what we have for the rest of the week, courtesy of our friends at the uh, National Weather Service. Pretty benign, all things considered. Some temperatures a little bit below normal, a couple of passing high clouds will filter the sunshine here and again. Outside of that, we are looking good. We have an upper level ridge that's dominating our weather. It's going to dominate our weather right through the rest of the week. But once you know it, once we get into the weekend, maybe some mountain snow, uh, slight chances of valley rain. That's in many locations of eastern Washington, but the lee of the Cascades are going to keep us high and dry. In fact, we're looking at quite a bit of sunshine, really all through the rest of the week and into the weekend with just a couple of filtered high clouds. Let's take a look at that forecast from the National Weather Service. There you go. Lots of sunshine today. High of about 45 degrees. We had 49 yesterday. Not going to be quite as warm today because it's cool. It's still 28 degrees outside of our studios. A couple of passing clouds tonight. 32 for the overnight low sunshine. Wednesday, 51. Sunshine Thursday, about 52. Sunshine Friday, about 53. Slightly cooler. On Saturday, there's a weak disturbance coming in Friday night. Going to cloud us up a little bit. Overnight low about 34, so you can see a little milder there. Saturday, quite a bit of sunshine, although we do have a slight chance of some light rain early Saturday morning. I mean early. You'll be sleeping if that happens at all. Outside of that, quite a bit of sunshine. High just about 50. Sunday, we do it again. Lots of sunshine. High of about 50. I think the golf course beckons on Sunday. Next uh, system comes in Sunday night, could give us a little bit of light snow. The snow level is going to drop down to about 600 feet. That's the valley floor Sunday night into Monday, but there's also not a lot of precipitation uh, anticipated with the upcoming system that's not going to come see us until Sunday night. Outside of that, we are looking good. Lots of sunshine. We love high pressure this time of the year when the high pressure builds itself up during sunny skies because if it builds itself up during cloudy skies we get that air inversion we really haven't had that much this year if you've lived at any time at all in the Wenatchee Valley you get used to that inversion layer when the clouds and the fog get trapped down to the valley floor we don't see the sunshine for weeks at a time it hasn't really been the case so far this year so that's your forecast from the National Weather Service let's take you up to the mountain passes things are looking mighty fine indeed at least if you're taking I-90 and blew it and even Stevens doesn't look too bad at all Right now, that's a live shadow blue. You have no advisories, no restrictions. The roadway is bare and dry. A couple of patches of ice here and there, but nothing you can't handle. And no snow coming down. No advisories, no restrictions. Stevens still has a traction tire advisory. It looks worse than it actually is. Yeah, you got compact summit ice on the roadway, but that's only the last five or six miles going up to the summit and then going back down on the other side. The vast majority of Stevens Pass are looking good. It is not snowing. They have clear skies. Uh, if you want to give yourself maybe another hour or two before you head over Stevens Pass, probably not a bad idea. The plows will do one more pass up near the summit and you should be good to go right now. Traction tires are advised. Blue Pass, no problems at all. Roadways bare and dry. No snow. Lots of sunshine as you can see. No advisories. Uh, 
No restrictions. If you're going to travel over the mountain passes today, please, ladies and gentlemen, use an automobile. It's just common sense. It really is. My guest tomorrow, tomorrow is Ash Wednesday. My guest tomorrow will be Matt Candless, the lead pastor of Trinity Church. I'm looking forward to that. Everybody have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.